Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center here in Fort Myers, Florida. There's many people that know that they're just not feeling good and they're really not sure why. In medicine, often when somebody's not feeling good and you just wonder, is the pathology inflammation, doctors will order a ESR and C RP levels, these are markers for systemic inflammation. What most people don't realize is how the body gets rid of inflammation in the body. Inflammation in the body is resolved by, the, by stimulation of the vagus nerve or input from the vagus nerve. So basically when somebody has inflammation all over the body, there almost always is a vagus nerve component and this includes conditions such as Lyme disease, mold toxicity, multiple chemical sensitivity, uh, long haul COVID. Like if you research long haul COVID in the vagus nerve, you'll see that uh, definitely the vagus nerve is involved in most cases in the pathophysiology of long haul COVID symptoms. I coined the term cervical vagal vagopathy inflammatory disease. So it's just basically somebody who has an inflammatory disease that's related to problems with the vagus nerve. If you actually research the word inflammation, it comes from the word inflammare, which basically means set on fire, right? And then in the Latin, inflammation like Celsus in the first century, he described inflammation with calor or heat, dolor, pain, rubor, redness, and tumor or swelling. So somebody who has these kind of things in the digestive tract, it could be the stomach, right? It's inflamed. Somebody gets an endoscopy and they have gastritis, which is just a redness, a swelling, pain. Uh, basically, they have inflammation of the stomach. And if the cause is unknown, it's possible that it's from a dysfunction of the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve dysfunction is often correlated with how bad the neck curve is because of a face down forward he head lifestyle. This is basically the vagus nerve. You can see the vagus nerve goes in into the internal body. So it innervates all the internal organs, the stomach, the vocal cords, the pharynx, the larynx, the lungs, the stomach, large intestine, small intestine, the spleen, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder. So anything related to the in, inner works of the body and those internal organs give a symptom or have a disease, it could be related to the vagus nerve. So right now we're in Florida and there's lots of lightning right now and then there's a big storm here. So it wouldn't surprise me if the power grid went out and you know when the power grid goes off, man, nothing works good. None of the electrical appliances are gonna work if the power goes out. So imagine in the human body, if the power was intermittently going out to the stomach, to the gallbladder, to the various sphincters, the sphincter that opens up the, uh, the gallbladder so the gallbladder can release bile, the gastroesophageal sphincter, right? What if that doesn't work right? A person might get uh, esophagitis or gastritis or a reflux, reflux disease. If the ileocecal valve wasn't working, the bacteria in the large intestine could go into the small intestine and you get small intestinal bowel overgrowth, right? So if you have a condition where some organ isn't working or you've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia or you're just achy all over or you look into the mirror and you just feel like your body's swollen, it's likely there's a vagus nerve component and the way to help resolve the symptoms and the condition is to get your vagus nerve healthy, which we'll talk about. And if you research on Google and you put in 
cholinergic anti-inflammatory system, you'll often get a figure like this one, which shows that the vagus nerve by its interaction with the spleen and its interaction with the enteric nervous system is how the vagus nerve resolves inflammation. And even if you look up long haul COVID and you look up acetylcholine receptors, right? When the vagus nerve is stimulated, it stimulates acetylcholine receptors. And it's those receptors on the immune system cells in the digestive tract and in the periphery, in the spleen that helps those cells release substances that resolve inflammation. The vagus nerve by its interaction with the acetylcholine receptors on macrophages and the gut associated lymphoid tissue in the digestive tract has those cells make anti-inflammatory substances, different kind of interleukins and interferons and different substances that reduce inflammation. And most of the medications that are out there like Humira, Enbril, and the different new biologics that are just called biologics, they're very, very potent and they're very, very good at reducing inflammation. But the question is, why does the person have that inflammation? I'm just saying one of the causes, the structural cause of systemic inflammation is cervical vagopathy. Vagus, vago relates to the vagus. Pathy means diseases of and cervical pertaining to the neck. So it's vagus nerve conditions, diseases that relate to the neck, cervical vagopathy. Cervical means the vagus nerve injury or the problem with the vagus nerve dysfunction is from the neck. And then this is just another illustration showing that the vagus nerve is involved with hunger, energy metabolism, uh, the psychology, mental health. It's involved with the proper functioning of the heart, the lungs, the digestive tract, the immune system. You know, all these things relate to the vagus nerve. I like to think about the vagus nerve as the main sensor of the body. So for your body to function properly, the brain has to receive from the vagus nerve the right information of what's going on in the body. Then when the brain says, holy cow, there's a lot of problems in the stomach or there's problems with blood pressure or there's too much inflammation in the body, the brain is gonna send nerve impulses through the vagus nerve that go to the digestive tract, that go to the heart to resolve inflammation, to slow the heart rate down, to lower blood pressure, to get the body in a repair or regenerative mode. Many times patients will come see me and they say, doc, I'm just telling you, man, since I, my neck's been bothering me, it almost is like my whole body's decaying. Like now I got clicking, popping, crunching in all my joints. And it's like my stomach's not working, my heart rate's up. You know, all these symptoms, dizziness, vertigo, all these things because for the body to be calm, to experience love, joy, uh, to, to be reparative, your vagus nerves have to function properly. So I got on here systemic toxic inflammation. Now there's lots of different causes for the body to get inflammation all over it. Somebody could have Lyme disease, somebody could have mold toxicity, there could be a food sensitivity. They're in a very, very bad relationship or they hate their job or there's financial stresses. Like all these things can cause systemic toxic inflammation. But, so, but we often forget that all this stuff causes inflammation because there's an injury or a dysfunction of the vagus nerve. And in today's cell phone era, everybody by hours and hours looking down at their cell phone or very, very bad posture on the computer, there's a structural cause, which I think is the main cause of vagus nerve injury that's causing the body not to function good. So this kind of shows you uh, basically when there's 
basically inflammation. So the places and consequences of inflammation. So when there's too much inflammation in the body, you can get pain, weakness, fatigue, swelling, stiffness. They often have tender points or trigger points. So if you notice like almost every part of your body, you can poke on it and it's very, very painful. The old term we'd say the person has fibromyalgia, which is really just a constellation of symptoms, unrestful sleep, body aching, and they have all these specific tender points all over. But normally what causes that is whatever is causing the systemic inflammation. And the symptoms the person gets is non-restful sleep, fatigue, pain, stiffness, weakness, swelling. Brain inflammation's interesting. I look at brain inflammation or brain fatigue, brain fog, different kinds of problems with cognition, memory, maybe memory isn't as good. If that's you, or you used to wake up really energetic and now it's like, ugh, you know, just really, really tired. I look at it as the toxic inflammatory metabolic waste products from all the visual stimuli, that's what's causing it. Now because of the cell phone, there's so much visual stimuli and all that visual stimuli causes your brain to have to do something. And what it does is it has to process all that visual stimuli. And what happens is all the cells make metabolic waste products and those waste products accumulate in the brain and they're flushed out of the brain during sleep. But the problem is if you have a ligament injury in your neck and your neck curve is no longer lordotic, but it's reversed or straight, which they, we call that military neck, the jugular veins close off and the waste products, the inflammatory toxic waste products in the brain can't get out. And that's what causes, you know, brainitis or inf inflammation in the brain. And basically, w people can now measure substances in the brain that accumulate. And if they accumulate too much, like tau protein and other proteins, those are associated with things such as Alzheimer's disease or various kinds of dementia. And I'm telling you, I have 20 year olds who are saying, doc, I'm just telling you, it feels like I'm getting dementia. And I've now seen people on CT scans in their 20s, in their 30s, having white matter lesions, which are the predecessor to dementia. So don't think that brain fog is a normal thing or it's not a harmful thing. It's very, very harmful. It's the start that there's probably inflammatory substances in the brain that are having trouble getting out. And the way that you get them out is by getting a good neck curve. This shows the vagus nerve input to the digestive tract. And uh, those people that have been to a holistic provider, or if you are a holistic provider, uh, a common thing that we see in holistic medicine is leaky gut syndrome, and there's various tests for that. But this is what I think causes leaky gut. The vagus nerve input is getting blocked or the vagus nerve is degenerated. The person has cervical vagopathy. And basically, there's increased intestinal permeability because the cells pull apart. And then, of course, inflammatory substances, toxic substances get into the bloodstream, and then you get systemic inflammation. You have basically the vagus jugular and nodose ganglion. That's where the DNA of the jugular vein is, which sits right in front of the atlas. So the more forward head you are, the more you have tension, clicking, popping, grinding in your neck, the more likely it is that you have upper cervical instability, ligamentous instability. And that instability basically starts injuring the vagus nerve. And when the vagus nerve gets injured, all kinds of things happen in the body, including gastrointestinal inflammation, lung inflammation, brain inflammation, and ultimately that causes a lot of symptoms. Now the way to improve this is to have a pro-vagus lifestyle. So that involves having good posture, having your computer system way up. It involves sleeping in a position where you're, you're trying to get a neck curve, keep your chin away from your neck. And it's, it's basically having lasting, loving, 
relationships, relationship with God, relationship with other people, relationship with yourself, and uh, doing a lot of laughing. And then these are things that a person can do to improve their neck curve. So it's very easy to figure out whether somebody has a structural neck problem. So even a lateral x-ray. In the office here we do digital motion x-ray where we put people through different kinds of motions to see if they have a looseness in the neck or if they have a structural neck problem. And these are different things. This is uh, prism glasses. So you can look down at a cell phone uh, with your neck up because there's a mirror that goes down. Sleeping in the right position, there's Izzy with various neck weights. There's Morgan who has a cervical orthotic or dental roll, and that's me with a physical therapist working on my posture. So cervical vagopathy, inflammatory disease can be helped by a pro-vagus lifestyle and then structurally restoring the neck curve and uh, stabilizing the neck if there's instability present by prolotherapy.